Sales advice from Ben Brown. On the phone, do not frown. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the 170th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we have Mr. Benjamin Brown. Ben Brown, former U.S. Marine. You know, those guys are never ex-Marines. Once Marine, always a Marine. Former U.S. Marine and current entrepreneur. Uh, ben owns a couple of businesses. He's also a sales trainer, and he is budding and brimming with optimism. Uh, we ran across each other on Twitter, actually. Uh, I like the way he reached out. I like what he's up to. So I had him on the show, and uh, I hope to meet him in uh, January. January 17th, I'm doing the Tampa Bay Frogman Swim. So that is coming up quickly. And even if you hear this after, you can always donate at helpwestswim.org, helpwestswim.org. Um, it's part of the Tampa Bay Frogman Swim, which is an event uh, that puts all of the money into the Navy SEAL Foundation. So I encourage you to go back and listen to the Navy SEAL Week, uh, seven episodes as well, that uh, will inspire you and motivate you as well, put a little faith in humanity and in our military. But anyway, I digress. As I mentioned in the last several episodes, starting out a new little venture where I'm giving away over $100 uh, worth of content and goodies to help you sell Mo better in the Sales Success Toolkit. All you have to do is subscribe to the podcast and leave a five-star review. Then text the word sales to 96000, 96000, so I know who you are and that you did it, and that way we can draw a winner. But you're a winner already listening to this podcast, so enjoy this episode with Ben Brown. Ben Brown, former Marine, oorah, all the way from Clearwater, Florida. Welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? Outstanding, outstanding, Wes. Thank you for having me. So you are the owner of 360salesconsulting.com. What else should our listeners know about you? Well, besides being a service in the military for six years in the Marine Corps, I have been out there just like everyone else since 94 after I got out. And I have been uh, going through a number of different positions in jails, but I've actually been in sales for the last, well, since I got out. I started in gem sales and had numerous businesses and still have them now. So finding my foothold in the online business, I've been doing sales coaching for two years and I own a Actually, a limo business, too, so I'm dual purpose, but going more <laughs> towards the online um, statue of, of finding and building my tribe and helping people with sales is my key. So what, uh, what made you think? Who, who died and made you king? Huh? What, what made you think you could effectively have a, a sales training business? Because I know a lot of people, they're very good, but they never take that leap. Uh, you know, basically kind of crowning yourself, right? And saying, yeah, I'm gonna go teach this stuff, you know? Yeah. So who, who died and made you King, man? Well, like I tell <laughs> many people in life, you got to find out what you're good at. You got to try a lot of things. So the key for me was I've done a lot of things in my life and I wanted to came to a part where I decided, okay, what do I really want to do for the next 10, 15 years? And the key component here for me is my family, as I told many people before, my mom was part of 15 kids and my dad's part of 10. So I have 73 first cousins, and most of them are teachers or preachers. And I found my birth mother two years ago, and she's a teacher, and my, my birth grandfather is a preacher. So even in my bloodline, it is. So, hey, it's in my blood. I want to teach. So what should I teach? I like it. I like seeing expression on people's faces and changing and educating them. I said, well, why don't I teach what I already know and what I've been doing for over 20 years? And that's sales. And just as a catalyst, okay, oh, I know sales, but am I qualified to teach it? Let's go ahead and test out and see what people are out there dealing with. And, you know, the test model to see if it's effective. And I, I was in a B&I group, which everybody knows, B- Business Network International. I started teaching the people in my, in my group, which is 67 members that meet every week. Mm-hmm. And you have what's called a one-to-one where you learn about their business and you learn about yours. And that was the limo business. And I started teaching them little sales tips to these individuals that had these small companies. And it was just amazing the type of results that came back to me. And like, man, that works. That worked, but you did work. And I'm like, yeah, that's basic sales. And so just information on that of just 67 people being the pulse on their business, I can sit down and say, 
wow, if I can have that effect on people that I know and everybody with small businesses, why can't I do this on a larger scale? So what they always say about consulting is what makes you an expert is knowing more than the person next to you, right. <laughs> but sure. also – Having the pain that you've been through, I know exactly what salespeople have gone through. I've been in a, a call center where I've done outbound calls for basically seven years straight on commission, 100% straight. I made my living on it. I've been a professional. I've made money in sales. I've made I, – I can drive by some of the houses of people that I've <laughs> made millionaires. So uh, you know, I've been through the trenches of selling products uh, uh, person to person and also on the phone. So I've lived it. And it was a justification. Yes, you know, hey, I can be an expert, it, and it is the key. But you have to have that catalyst to say, hey, I'm willing to help people, and that's that's the key, not just trying to make money. So, what are you saying now? What are some What are some of the sales myths that persist even t- today? You know, with the advent, you know, the internet is obviously here to stay. Uh, mm-hmm. Mobile marketing, social media marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you see people always getting wrong? Well, most of, one of the first things people get wrong is that they can email themselves to millions. Uh, a lot of the things you have to do is, is, is get on the phone. Most people are afraid of the phone. Fifty percent of the problem is that right there. If, if your business is viable and you want to make sure that it works, pick up a phone and call and try to sell it. That's what I tell people. They come up with a concept of this product, and I'm like, well, sell it to me. You know, well, I want to make millions and I want to do this and I want to email and I want to funnel. And I'm like, so you never want to get on the phone. You never want to touch a customer. You never want any feedback, huh? Nope. So you basically – the good thing about most of the people in business is that they would love to have 100 percent well-diverse and skilled salesperson to come in and sell their product. But you know, they don't have the skills to do it themselves. So I tell them sales is a skill. It's something you have to work at. It's something you practice. So does the phone still work? Can people sell today on the phone? It works. It's never going to stop working. And did, you just that, give, <laughs> did you just give me a – did, did, did you do that? I just did that because I said that's the basics of everything. That's the basics of selling. The other stuff that we have today is great. It's awesome. The internet is phenomenal. You can reach a tremendous amount of people, but the basis of what you have is still people to people. LinkedIn is the same deal. You're trying to get in to get comfortable with people so you can answer questions to see if you can help them with your product or service. It's the key. It's the basics for sales. And that's the thing that I try to teach people is understanding the concept. It's nothing to be afraid of. You're having a conversation in a manner to help people with your product or service. But it's a lot more than that. It's, as you know, it's a little bit more intricate, but it's a process. So how, how can somebody get good on the phone? What would you say? Somebody's listen, listening to this right now. Mm-hmm. They're at the gym. You know, they're uh, on a run. They're going to get back to the office later today. Can they pick up the phone today? Can you give them a tip, something to do uh, to get them better on the phone this afternoon? One of the key things that I always say is the first thing that I teach in my process is never, ever, ever assume anything. That's ruled out by questions. Never assume that they have the money. Never assume they don't have the money. Never assume that they're a decision maker. These are ruled out by questions. What makes a good salesperson great is the great salesperson to ask more questions than the good salesperson. Mm -hmm. So the questions that you're asking is giving you the feedback to understand where you're at in your sales. When you learn the process and realize, hey, the next step is here, and then you know later on down the line, you can ask permission for the close, which is based upon the information that you gather. Um, And that's basically what it is. I mean, people want to just tell, tell, tell. I'm I'm with uh, one of my clients today, and I'm on the phone. I said, you need to slow it down. I'm like, (laughs) you're you're assuming that these guys know everything. You've been in sales for many years, and I'm teaching a guy who's been in sales for 20 years. And you always can learn something. Sales is is a beautiful part. I mean, you always can learn something from Grant Cardone or Zig Ziglar. I mean, nobody is is an ultimate truth here. It's something that you always can pull from. But as long as you have a process, slow it down for some people, and you're assuming you're talking too fast. You know, you got to ask the questions. You're, you're in a conversation with somebody where you're pulling them along so you can help them, and you have to do that with feedback. So you need that feedback. It's timing. It's a lot of intricate things, but it's fun. Once you understand the concept, 
And Wes, I tell you, the beautiful thing is when you look at that person and they finally say, I got it. A bell comes on. And it's like, yeah, yeah, because it's a different language. So uh, you say, you know, start with a question, ask better questions. And I, I agree. Uh, do you have some kind of common or standard winners, if you will? Uh, I mean, what, like, again, if somebody is getting to the office this late this morning, you know, early this afternoon, they're going to be working the phones. Um, what should they ask? What, what shouldn't they ask? You know, let's assume they get the, um, the receptionist, you know, or the executive assistant on the phone. Uh, what should they do? Well, you're talking about the gatekeeper, uh, and the key component is your composure on the phone. A lot of people, the problem that they have in sales is confidence. So you, you, I, one of the things I teach in my book is getting prepared mentally and physically because it's a grind sometimes. You can make it a grind if you don't make it fun, uh, if you're cold calling, things of that nature. So getting prepared and actually practicing what you're going to say before you get on the phone is key. Don't start practicing once you start dialing. I t- covered that today with one of my guys. I'm like, you got to take this home and you got to, you know, you have one of the phones right now. Hear yourself speak into that phone, your pitch. Would you buy from yourself with that? Hmm, I don't think so. So, you know, you have a a spouse at home. She's willing to help you. A lot of things go back to practice. So when you're on the phone with that receptionist, you're asking for the person, decision maker, and then also using them sometimes, depending on the tone that they have, they can help you. It depends on the people. Sometimes they're there just to keep you out. Sometimes they don't know that they're not to keep you out. So you can use them as well. What's the best time that they're going to be available I have something phenomenal I think that would be awesome, awesome for them to look at. What is a good time they'll be in? Because normal times they'll tell you, try to put you through a voicemail, right? <laughs> sure they do. Yes. Um, so have you found like, a, a better or worse time to call? Because I, I learned, uh, even now, I don't have to make too many uh, outbound calls, but I will have people every now and then stand me up uh, mm-hmm. or go dark. Uh, mm-hmm. and fortunately it's rare, but Hey, nobody's perfect. Um, and I've learned still to this day. I mean, and I've been at it 20 years, um, mm-hmm. calling early before that gatekeeper's there, maybe calling at lunch, uh, or calling late after the gatekeeper leaves. Um, have you found that to be the case? Definitely. Um, your key component here depends on the product and service and who you're calling uh, is the early time because if you're calling most successful people, they're the ones that's in before the workers come in, which is actually your front desk people. So they're probably taking calls early that morning. So it is many a times I've been in sales where I've called to CEOs or CFOs or things of that nature and push the buttons around, which you learned, and you hit zero or go here or you find the connection, and you'll find out that the CFO picked the phone up. <laughs> so, so you know, it's it's the willingness to take the extra step in sales. Is is being invented in inventive as well as like when your market, you know, who's hourly. Like the the company I'm consulting right now is actually dealing with uh, car dealerships. So you're dealing with general managers. So they have morning meetings. But what time is their morning meetings? So you need to figure that out and get to him before that morning meeting because next thing you know, he's on the floor all day. So, you know, your window of opportunity is very small with them. So, you know, doctors are the same thing if you deal with lawyers. It just depends on the demographics. But, yeah, you have to put in at least 30 minutes beforehand to get on that phone. If you start work at 9, I'll start calling at 830. You'll never know who you'll reach. You never know. Just be always prepared, though. Well, I love what you said about, yo, don't make assumptions because, like, I've called, you know, during the lunch hour and, you know, the hourly people – Take a lunch hour. And a lot mm-hmm. of times the boss will be covering the phones mm-hmm. uh, and the boss may be a woman, you know, so you can't, <laughs> you can't assume oh, only men, only office. <laughs> it's like, you're going to get your butt, <laughs> you get your head handed to you. Right. Right. And that's why I say my first rule before I start with every education I teach is never assume anything. You can't, you'll lose you every time because you'll get toward the end and you'll realize, hey, they're not the decision maker or, hey, they didn't have any money or, by the way, they had all the money and you assume they didn't have the money and you pitched them differently. So everything is consistent and you rule out based upon your questions. You give everybody respect uh, and you'll get respect back and, you know, you can make some money probably. Do you have an example of um, of like a a tough sale? Maybe you were creative or persistent uh, and things went your way? 
Oh, okay. I'll give you one. Um, I think a couple of years ago, uh, I, I don't know if this is a record, but I always tell people that I teach there are specific rules that you have in sales that you have to adhere to. One of the main ones that we always know is that you know you, when you ask for the close, the first one talked that loses, right? That's it. That's one of the main things. You build everything up in your your pitch to get to that, from prospecting to emailing to phone call to email back to finally getting them on the phone to doing the presentation. You do everything right, and you get all the way to the end, and then it's the close. And there's a lot of people that talk past that close. And so anyway, that's not. It's like shh, just listen. They'll tell you. They'll tell you if they want it or not. So I'm on the phone with a prospect, and this old gentleman from Texas. I never forget. And so. Um, you know, the deal was, uh, you know, we're on the floor. I was in a room of about 65 guys. We were all doing outbound calls, and we had abilities to listen to everybody on the phone, and the manager can plug in at any time. So I went through my pitch, everything like that. I think we're around about $2,000 where we're at with the gentleman. And I got toward the end, and I said, so what card do you want to put on? And then, just like everything else, there's rules. So I adhere to those rules, and I sat down, and I, I waited, and 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 I put him on mute, and I went to the manager, and I asked, is he still on? He said, yep, and we waited. It got to 10 minutes and 35 seconds of silence on the phone. <laughs> the gentleman finally said, well... And then it was about another 35 seconds of silence, and he said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> he still and, didn't answer the question. Uh, he still didn't answer the question. He said, let's do it. Well, he didn't say what credit card to put it on. <laughs> he said, let's do it. And I was like, "Is that well, you know, that's me. What, is that a visa? Um, so, I mean – the, uh, it's just amazing that if you, you know, most people, you know, it, pulling my hair out, just standing there, it's it felt like 10 hours. Oh, I know. Um, but, That's amazing. Uh, I've never gone that long. 10 minutes and 30, <laughs> about 10 minutes and 35 seconds. is. I mean, I timed it. I, I just, from the time that I asked for it, I clicked and I, I just waited and it was just amazing. And I, you want to say something so bad, but you know, if you say something, you break, you break everything that you built. Um, so you got to let it lay and to let everything set. And, you know, gentleman from Texas, from the South, he's just debating this over in his head over and over again. And he's cool with it, but you're going crazy. Mm. So you just have to, you, you know, I teach people there's it's rules for a purpose. So that's, that's one of them of the many that I've had. So it's that's outstanding. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got any, uh, crash and burn examples? Oh my goodness! What I mean, you wanted flames on it, or you just wanted? <laughs> oh, God, um, like okay, I'll, 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 I'll give you, I'll give you expenditure, <laughs> everything. So I'm working for this company. Uh, this is a traveling type sale where you actually have to go to the client, and uh, you know, you set up everything by phone conversation. You set up the time to go out and do your presentation, do everything that you need to do. So, you know, it's a, it's a long drawn out. It's not a one call close. It's a process. So I set it, you know expectantly assumed and set the gentleman up for the presentation. I flew out on my own dime. I figured oh. this is, this is going to be, you know, uh, basically a deal. Oh, We're talking no. about 15,000, maybe $20,000 deal, you know, commission rate about 15%. You know, you're going to make some money. It's always worth it. So I fly out I, on my own dime. I'm in somewhere in the Midwest. It's cold, it's freezing. I go out and get my rental car. I go set up the presentation, my laptop. I do the entire presentation. I sat down. I'm like, okay, Hey, they listen to it. The guy says, this is awesome. This is great. I'm like, yes. And I go for the clothes and I go, so what card do you, you know, what, what purchase order? How would you guys like to proceed? And he said, well, let me take this to uh, send this to a gentleman over in Seattle. And then he can look at the request. And then right then and there, as he's speaking it out of his mouth in slow motion, I realized that I didn't follow my own rules and I didn't qualify. Mm -hmm. So he was not the decision maker. So I, you know, like I tell people, sales is something, a skill you have to keep up on. If you miss, you get too confident, you'll miss the steps. And I missed the qualification. And I realized right then and there that the whole sale went downhill. I didn't even get it. I blew out probably maybe like $2,500 on everything, expenses and stuff that I've done. Uh, and just, it was just, uh, I just, I just crushed. And you mm -hmm. just, 
on the plane, you just knock yourself on the back of the head like a kid. And he's like, it's, you know, the person in front of you is like, is that a six year old slamming their head? No, it's just a dumb salesperson that didn't qualify. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's why I teach rules in my book. I teach 10 steps that every rep that I teach, I give them the steps that they are like a check mark that they have to do every time. Right. Make them realize, hey, I missed that. Where were you at in your sale? Which is a key component. So, yeah, I remember I was uh, I had a ten month consulting gig with Dell back in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Uh, they were deploying Salesforce dot com and then doing uh, sales training, uh, a whole new methodology and leverage the tool. Um, and I remember after um, after day one on one of the sessions, um, you know, we're at a hotel and. I went out to dinner. I came back, and and a bunch of the people that were in my class were in the hotel bar there. Uh, and it wasn't really late. You know, it was like you know, ten, ten thirty. You know, not not three a.m., but still late enough. They had been able to tie one on. And um, and one of the guys said, "You know, you're absolutely right." Because I told a, a similar story. You know, I said, "Look, when I travel, you know, to go meet somebody, it's on my own dime." Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I had worked corporate America for a long time in technology and, you know, and I had an expense account. So it wasn't a big deal. They expected me to go spend money. Right. Uh, they expected me to go uh, hit these different towns and blah, blah, blah. But when it's your own money, <laughs> you know, it's different. I kind of told that story. And, you know, that guy, you know, having a few drinks in him, you know, we get an honest answer. He says, you know what? You're right. He says, I've gotten on the plane and I've flown to meetings that I never would have gone to if it was my own money. Uh, you know, so, I mean, that point is, is a hundred percent accurate. Mm-hmm. You got to qualify. You got to, you know, thing I tell people is mm-hmm. when you work with me, uh, my goal is to have you go on less appointments, but make more money. That's the key. Qualification is one of the steps that I, I just emphasize how many people, one of the gentlemen's I, I was with, you know, he's a plumber, and I'm like, well, how do you qualify people on the phone before you go out and do an estimate? Right. He's like, we just go out. I'm like, well, what is your closing rate? What are you talking about? Uh, your closing rate when you go out, how many people do you close? Um, yeah, they look no at you. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you say when people call, uh, like entrepreneurs? What do you say when the phone rings? Yep. Um, what do your people say? They just wing it, huh? Everybody in the business should have some type of sales skill. It's just like the Marine Corps. Everybody can pick up a rifle and shoot. Right. So in your organization, everybody needs to – that's why I emphasize, you know, I tell people, you know, just don't, you know, use my course or use my material, or use me, but continue on. Every six months or a year, you should go back through some type of sales training to keep your, your knife sharp because it's a skill. If you don't use it, it falls off. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so that's why I emphasize, you know, what, what, what happened if I finish your course? I said, well, next year, come back and do it again. Sure. You know, you're going to have to understand and maybe something to change, but sales is sales. Um, but a lot of people, like I said, they want to email themselves. They want to they want to tweet themselves. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> you know, and you could do that, but that's marketing. And I tell one of the emphasis that I always do is that people don't know the difference between marketing and sales. It's two right. different things. Sure. Marketing gets you an exposure. It gets people in the doors. What you do with them once they're in contact with your company, that turns into sales. Right. So, you know, an uh, email, a phone call, a tweet, whatever, that is starts sales process. So what happens when that starts is the key. Right. Mm-hmm. I hear you. All right. So you keep talking about these 10 things. So um, your book is coming out right now, right? Yeah, it's called Master the Art of Closing the Sale, and I put 10 steps to close new clients that generate referrals because what I like in the part uh, that I do different from a lot of people, I start from the beginning of getting prepared mentally, physically, and then also after the sale is making them part of the sales process is to make sure that you ask for a referral. Mm -hmm. Most people get the sale, and they're just so happy and lauded on, they skip off to the bank. Uh, and they had, could have had opportunity to, you know, if that person bought from you, he's probably associated with people in your target market that you can uh, get in contact with. And, and you don't have to sell as hard on a referral that you do. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so it becomes a snowball effect. And I, a lot of people ask me, well, when do you ask for a referral? I say, I ask for a referral right after the sale. Sure. And he said, why do you do that? And, you know, they don't know if they like your product. I said, yeah, I don't know if they're going to like my product, but I know they – I said, let me ask you a question. You have family members, right? They go, yeah. I said, do you give them money? They said, no. <laughs> and I said, well, when you finish the sale, normal times they just gave you money, right? They go, yeah. And I said, well, if people trust you with their money, then they'll trust you with their friends. Mm-hmm. So if they, if I just gave you my money, then that means I'll trust you with my friends right then. I'm not going to call you a month later. You might, the product might not have worked. Yeah. So, <laughs> so right then and there, your process is to, like I said, start right there, pull out a pen and a pad and say, now's the time that I normally ask for two to three referrals. Who would you like to start with and close? <laughs> and, nice. And so you get it right after the fact. It's part of your process and right. just make it seem like it's just normal, your normal process. This is the part of time. Thank you for your business. But this is time that we normally ask for referrals. We normally get two to three. Who would you like to start with and shut up and close? <laughs> it's, it's just automatic. If you start doing that, you'll be amazed. Oh, well, I know Jim. And then you just go through the process. I teach them that. What is Jim? When is the best time to reach Jim? Should you call them first? Should I call them? Mm-hmm. What's the best time? So he's telling you how to get to your next deal. And, you know, it's not nothing abrasive, but, you know, it was, and you're asking permission to reach out to them and when's the best time. And they're telling you. So when you call that gentleman, you already have the background. You already have, Jim told me to give you a call, said that you've been having these problems. Tell me a little bit about that. Let me see if I can help you as well. So mm-hmm. it's just a smooth process because, oh, Jim told me you called me. He already called me and told me that you'll be calling. Oh, perfect. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's just getting referrals and then testimonials are key. Uh, you know, ask for testimonials that you put in your your media, your marketing. A lot of people don't do that. It's just small things that I love to teach that can tell people that sales can be fun. Right. If, if you know what you're doing and you have something that's going to work for you, that's consistent, that you can improve on. And the key is improvement. There's no such thing as perfection. Yeah. There's no such thing as a perfect pitch. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a, everything is a work in process, but as long as you're willing to learn and continue to learn, you'll be dominant. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, we will have links to everything, uh, and reviews of this, uh, and links to your book, but if people want to reach you, the main way, uh, we started with, right. was 360 sales consulting.com. Yes. And, uh, my email is Ben at 360 sales consulting, or you can do team 360 sales. This is my Twitter account. Reach out to me. Uh, and also I'll be doing some giveaways, you know, some things for your people, uh, on the website, on the links. Uh, I have a book coming out, so it'll give you access to some of that and reach out to me, contact. I love communicating with people, finding out what they need and how I can help and things of that nature. So, and, uh, you know, for your constituents, and then I'll show them some pictures of you swimming on the 17th. Sounds good. I will, <laughs> I will see you uh, in Clearwater, Florida on the 17th of January. Yes, sir. All right, man. All right, Ben Brown, former Marine. Thanks for coming on the Sales Podcast. Thank you, Wes. 10 minutes, 35 seconds. That is a record as far as I know. I've never had to wait that long. Uh, you know, you may wait 10 or 15 seconds, and it feels like 10 minutes. I've waited maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute. I don't know, but 10 minutes, 35 seconds. That's amazing, but it's totally true. Whoever talks first after you ask for the order tends to lose. Now in an ideal world, your marketing and your positioning uh, and your expertise has preceded you. It has warmed up the prospect. It softened the beachhead, if you will, in a military parlance. Uh, But if you can't, create that type of marketing, but you know, you should, um, when you're face to face, toe to toe, belly button to belly button, the first one to talk does lose, which is why I always encourage you to get good at selling, get some good sales training because you always say marketing is just selling in print. If you're a good salesperson, I think you're going to become a better marketer. Okay. And great marketing makes the sale easy, but you know what? Great selling makes great marketing possible, all right, because you're making the money that funds the marketing. So you invest it back in yourself and you just grow and you grow and you grow. So that's why I incorporate a couple of things, controlling the sale, 
and automating as much as you can, creating as much marketing to warm up the prospect in a free course. All right. If you go to the saleswhisperer.com, uh, I'm giving this away right now. It's a seven day free mini course. It's the most content I've ever given away totally free in a, in a program like this, a structured program. You know, even though I've got, I don't know, almost 800 blog posts, almost 200 pages on my site. This is, uh, so I've got a lot of content, hundreds of videos, but something like this is kind of unique for me. I will be making more things like this moving forward, but you want to grab this now uh, and learn this process that I talk about. It's how I built my own business since 2006. Uh, it incorporates a lot of the sales that I use when I was in corporate America to have a successful sales career that funded my launch, you know, my bootstrap venture into running my own business. So just head on over to thesaleswhisper.com and sign up for the free seven day mini course and read it. Set, set aside the time to go through it. I link back to the site to other things, other videos. I reference specific podcasts that augment and supplement what I teach in those lessons. So become a student of sales and become a student of marketing. All right. Thanks for listening. Be sure to share this, leave a comment, leave a five-star review. I'd sure appreciate it. And as always, remember to sell different.